Hi everyone, Sam here. Let's get started. Good to see everybody. All right. So we uh, started our trade of the week sessions last week. Let's keep them going and continue here. Again, uh, good to see everybody. Hopefully the information we went over last week uh, helped. And today we will cover a similar topic, review a little bit of last week and focus on a trading opportunity um, that came up for us uh, this week, one we have had planned out for a while. And so I'll share with you how that worked. Last week went over a trading opportunity that worked out and another one that didn't and the clear reason why. Uh, today I think we'll just focus on one because there's a lot to talk about. All right, excellent. So in these sessions, we talk about pure supply and demand. This is the strategy uh, I developed uh, many, many years ago. And keep in mind that uh, this is no, um, you know, uh, what this is basically is just simply how the markets really work. I think a lot of people have all these thoughts around uh, some special secret sauce and all that. Uh, yes. We built an algorithm that finds these supply and demand levels, but set that aside as far as the strategy itself and the rules behind that and the algorithm. It's just how the markets really work. That's all. Okay. Which happened to be in line with how you make money buying and selling anything. So everyone out there really, I think, understands this. What they don't understand is that last concept is that how you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the financial markets. So I'm here to share with you what that looks like on a price chart. It's one rule-based strategy that we can apply for day trading, swing trading, longer term investing, and anything in between. At the end of the day, the two most important questions in business, right? What can I, buy this for or produce this for, and what can I sell this item at? What is the profit margin, right? I think we all understand that. In our world, what we're looking for is where will price turn and where will it go? For that, we focus on pure supply and demand. And when I say pure supply and demand, does everybody know what I mean, uh, mean by that? You know, if you've noticed over the past, I don't know, few years, and especially even more recently, everybody's, everybody all of a sudden is talking supply and demand, and it's got a supply and demand class, and a supply and demand this, and a supply and demand that. The problem is most of those people um, and groups, um, you know, what's happened over the years is all of this, everyone's added stuff to it and you know, complicated it and with, with this and that. And uh, I think a lot of that stems from, you know, you have to spend some time actually uh, actually doing it and actually trading it and actually, you know, watching it. All right. So uh, that's what we mean by pure supply and demand. This is just the original uh, rules that have never changed and never need to change. However, we apply the strategy. All right, let's move forward. And uh, like last week, let's talk about the risks. So uh, remember, this is purely to uh, share with you, again, how the markets really work. These are not, uh, this is not trading advice. Um, and you have to make sure that you understand all the risk involved in trading and investing and you're okay with the risk that comes along with trading and investing and, um, and all that. And like we talked about last week, the majority of traders, right, lose money. We all know that. So make sure you know what you're getting into uh, before you get into it. And the majority of long-term investors seem to never come close to achieving their financial goals. There's a reason. Uh, no, someone's asking in the chat, have the rules changed? Um, no. No rules have changed, uh, strategy hasn't changed, rules have cha haven't changed, and um, no, no, not at all. 
the reason why I kind of talked about that is because there's a lot of other supply demand stuff out there and people are adding all kinds of stuff to it and steps and this and that and, um, for whatever reason. But, um, it, you know, so then people come to us and we got a lot, a lot of emails saying, well, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. And it's like, well, it's because that's not a part of the strategy and you don't need to do this. And you don't need to do that. All right. Okay. Let's move forward. Oil is our trade of the week. So first, let me set up the opportunity, and then I'm going to explain um, all of this to you. So we've been looking at, so I think most of you know, oil's been, uh, oil took that really deep dive a uh, little ways back and has slowly been making its way higher, okay? And um, what we care about is quantifying supply and demand in any and all markets, in any and all time frames, uh, period. So as we looked at the oil market, and what we want to do is, we, here's our little red and green friends over on the left. What matters is when we look at a price chart and we see where current price is, we want to know, is it in the middle or the novice space? Is it up near supply or at supply? Is it down at or near demand? That's the question that we want to answer. Why do we want, why do we focus on that and really only focus on that? Because unfilled orders or uh, significant supply uh, demand imbalance on the supply side, right? Cause prices to turn lower. Just like demand or unfilled orders on the buy side cause prices to stop falling and turn higher. We know that price spends most of its time in the middle, which we call the novice space. Why do we call it the novice space? Because it's probably not a good idea for you to risk your hard earned money when price is in the middle. Why? Because the odds are not stacked in your favor. There's a lack of a supply. If we all agree that a significant supply and demand imbalance caused prices to turn, well, in the middle or novice space, we don't, we don't have a significant supply and demand imbalance, right? So why would we want to put money at risk there? Okay. We're going to look at that, uh, Thomas. We're going to, we're going to, uh, you're going to see where this goes. Okay. Just like we did last week in that recording and understand that, you know, like, again, we talked about last week, price spends most of its time in the middle. The price spends very little time out here at, at uh, significant retail prices or supply. Why? Because there's so much competition to sell. It, price gets up here and that competition to sell forces it back down to the middle. Just like price spends very little time down at key significant demand zones or demand levels or wholesale prices, all that competition to buy down here just forces price back up to the middle. So we watch and we wait, right? Again, all the rules are the same, whether you're a day trader, swing trader, longer term investor, any and all markets, stocks, futures, Forex, options, um, real estate, bonds, cryptocurrency, you name it. So let's take a look. Now, what I want to show you, so here's the supply zones we were looking to uh, potentially sell short at. Why? Because the, the chart suggested, strongly suggested, based on our strategy, that uh, big financial institutions, oil producers, OPEC, had a lot of oil to sell up here. Now, let's take a look. So this is all, look at the dates. So this is all, um, this is all the last, what, month, right, in oil. And you can see uh, during that time, we had a demand zone in our sessions. These are all from our, all these screenshots are from our live sessions. So we had a demand zone for our members that worked out fine a number of times um, down here in demand. And then this black line up here, this black line at 43, uh, uh, 40 here is this, are these zones up here? Okay. So these zones up here is this area up here. So as price was starting to move higher and nearing our entry point at the supply area, notice what we'd had here. 
Okay, lots of trading activity, lots of wide and whippy trading activity. The presence of lots of transactions in this market tells us that we found the middle, right? That's the middle. The picture of the novice space or filled orders is this, right? Isn't that what this, what all these um, red and green candles represent? Orders being filled and tons of them. And you can see when price dipped down out of that area into our demand zone, okay, where there were unfilled orders, big supply demand imbalances down here, price spent very little time down here, and that competition to buy pushes price back to the middle. All right? Because, let me go back here. So this supply zone up here, even, even if we think that there's a significant amount of supply, huge supply demand imbalance up here, that's not enough reason to look to sell short here and bet on a downside move in oil. We need to know that we have a profit zone and the profit zone is, is clear novice space, right? A clear area of filled orders. And here those are. This is the picture that represents that. Make sense? Now, um, this week, trade of the week, price uh, finally just poked out of the novice space or the middle, went right up to our uh, supply zone and fell about $2 over the past two days. By the way, are there any, of, um, any members of the side and strategies with us here today? If there are any, and um, uh, maybe, you, maybe some of you took this trade, not sure. I know some people said they did in the uh, in the session uh, this morning. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, okay. So, um, right. So again, notice how that competition to sell up here. Oil producers, big financial institutions have a lot of oil to sell up here. That's why price just touched a level and shot back down to the middle as it should. This is how any market works. Okay. A lot of people take trades in the middle. They end up throwing money away when they don't need to. Does that make sense? All right. And it, it's really the two pictures that represent either the middle or supply and demand. And that's it. Now, if you look at this high right here, but you see uh, this high right here, which is the very top of the, uh, the novice space, if I go back, that was this first level, this first supply level right here, right? So price just poked into there and fell. This second level, which is an even higher probability opportunity, okay, was this one. So you had a nice big move uh, down to demand from that first supply zone. And then um, into this week, price rallied up to the second supply zone. And now after a day or so, we're uh, right back in the middle. Okay. Your target is always going to be somewhere before your opposing demand zone for a selling opportunity and for buying opportunities, it will be always be somewhere just before your opposing supply zone. Okay. You always want to make sure that our, when we buy, we're out just before supply because at supply, there's competition to sell. We want to make the targets, we want to make it easier to achieve that target. Right. Okay. Now coming into um, now, first of all, before we go on. So, you know, when you think of news and cause there's a lot of news this week, right? You think of news and price. It's such a perfect relationship that the vast majority of people think backwards. All right. And yes, there was a lot of news this week. Uh, some of the news, uh, help bring people in to buy oil and oil, you know, went higher, but take a look up here. So why would someone buy at supply? Anybody, anybody care to help help out here? Why would they, why would someone buy at supply? I mean, somebody bought here, people bought here. Why would they buy here? Um, what are some of the reasons? Think of how most people are taught to do this. Remember, most people lose money, right? Most people lose money. We know that. So what do most people do? What are the rules that most people use to make decisions to buy and sell in the markets? 
One of the biggest ones, yeah, they follow the trend. That's a good one. Okay, so do we have an uptrend underway when it's time for us to push the sell button? We do. We have a series of higher highs and higher lows, right? So that would bring a lot of people in to buy. Fear of missing out on the move, yep. All the indicators and oscillators will be pointing higher here. Emotions, yep, all the news, all that stuff. Okay. Have you ever read a book or seen anywhere on the internet that says um, to sell when prices go up? Sell in an uptrend? Have you ever, anybody ever seen that? In fact, if you did sell short here, according to our rules, you're breaking that golden rule, aren't you? You're selling in an uptrend. Okay, don't forget, most people lose money. One of the things you might want to stop doing is listening and to what everybody else does and thinking like everybody else does. Okay? Yeah. All right. So um, let's keep going. So we had a session this morning, and uh, here it is. There's Jasmine. If you know Jasmine, she's amazing. She, uh, she did the session with me this morning. And after price fell from our 4340 supply, uh, coming into this morning session, we actually had a new little supply level that developed um, after price hit, our, hit our, uh, our level up here. Okay. So here's the, and this is a screenshot actually from this morning session. And during the session, we were going over this with members and, uh, and price had fallen from this level and had rallied back up there. Over the past, I think it's, uh, I don't know, a couple hours or so now, uh, well, it's been a few hours now, um, price hit that level and fell. Okay. Now notice this supply zone is a gray circle. So we have a color coding system for our levels. And um, the reason why this level is a gray circle is because of its location. Right. This was not necessarily meant to be a trading opportunity. It could and it would have worked out fine. Um, but this was more if people were short from the supply level above, just knowing that there's a new supply level that's developed, um, you know, suggests prices are going to go lower. And they already fell two full points, which is big in oil. Uh, but this suggested there was uh, that was going to happen. Uh, there's going to be more of a move down because there's even more supply that came into the market down here. But now notice, I want to point, I want to uh, help you understand something. The gray circle suggests lower probability and smaller profit zone. Why? Because that, that level is in the middle. Now it's near the upper part of the middle, but it's still in the middle. Notice these two levels up here where price turned at were gray boxes when we set them up. Why? They were not in the middle. We're up here, okay, up in supply. All right. So hopefully all that makes sense. Uh, these sessions are meant to be short 15 to 30-minute sessions to help you understand, again, how markets really work, using real opportunities in the market to show you these. And um, we get so many emails and, uh, and questions and a lot of times the answers are always the same and it's, and it's usually people's challenges. Okay. Uh, yeah, Keith, that's another big one. Right. So I want to share something with you and hopefully that was, hopefully that was uh, helpful. And, um, so again, you know, most people, you know, the, the focus of what, you know, we're thinking about, we're talking about the strategy. It, it comes down to the, the big question, right? And this is the big thing I noticed on the trading floor when, uh, you know, I understood how markets work and started to develop the strategy. And it's really this, it's, well, there's, we've got more information, but it's, it's, um, why does, why do Wall Street professionals make so much money and everybody else doesn't? That's the big question. Right. Well, you can see most people take action in the novice space. Most people buy at or near supply because that's what they're taught to do. 
right? Most people sell at or near demand because that's what they're taught to do and that's what they're comfortable doing on the emotional side. It's the professional that thinks opposite. They understand that how you make money in these markets means you, right, buy at wholesale prices, sell at retail prices, period. Now, if you're struggling with all this and struggling, um, you know, in the financial markets as a day trader, swing trader, uh, longer term investor, we put together a workshop and um, and it's a really good one. I saw it uh, yesterday and today and um, it is next Tuesday. There's the link and I think someone will put the link in the chat if you like. So this is a virtual workshop. And um, what we have is a complimentary introduction to the strategy, the pure supply and demand strategy, right? And, um, but you have to qualify for it. So to see if you qualify for the complimentary, it's free, uh, pure supply and demand strategy uh, uh, class. It's, uh, I think it's three or four hours. Um, to see if you qualify for it, you have to, um, you, you'll, you'll find out if you go to the workshop. So if you go to the workshop on Tuesday, that's next week, 11 a.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, that's about a 45 minute workshop. And uh, there's also some great information on there. What was great about the workshop, uh, what's great about this workshop is, you know, there's a big focus on the actual challenges that people have. Because before you can fix the problem, you need to understand what the problem is. Does that make sense? Okay. People say, I've heard people so many times say, Sam, I, I really need help with my, uh, my stops. And I say, okay, let me see your charts. So they show me their charts and I say, you don't have a problem with your stops. You're entering the market in the wrong place. Right. People say, wow, I really get hurt on gaps. Yeah. Gaps can be very risky, but the problem is you're entering the gap on the wrong side. You don't understand how markets really work. So anyway, uh, next Tuesday, virtual workshop to find out, uh, see if you can qualify for the complimentary pure supply and demand uh, strategy class. And uh, there you go. Again, if you have any questions, just let us know. There's the link in the chat. And um, until then, we'll see you next week. Hopefully that was helpful. Have a great day and great to see everybody again.